What it do, my student crew? Mr. L in the place to be about to hit you with a crash course on how to design a Twitch banner. Dang, Twitch banner, let's go. So, like, a couple things you guys need to understand and things to know, right? Um, is this easy? Maybe. Can it get complicated? If you make it complicated, depending on how you want to design your banner and all the little things that you want to add to it. But for now, let's keep it simple, right? Um, also, like I do, I keep kind of a board, a pin board or a Pinterest board of inspiration, ideas, things that I think are cool that I want to apply to a design. So always think about that when you're putting stuff together, when you're planning your attack, right? Also, make sure you take a look at Twitch, right? Because now Twitch profiles have this big offline banner where it lets you leave a video saying, hey, thanks for coming to the channel. So we got to think that about that when we dive into our design process, right? So how about it? You guys want to jump into Photoshop? Jump into Photoshop and get ready. Let's go. Let's do this. All right. Now that we're in Photoshop, let's set ourselves up, right? So a couple ways to open a new document, file new, which is the same if you're on a Mac or Windows, uh, control or command N. Um, control, obviously, if you're the Windows user. Command, if you're the Apple user, or create new. In this case, I'm just going to actually go to create new. Boop. Uh, and hopefully you've watched my video on setting up efficiency in Photoshop. So I have all my templates already saved. So since we're designing for Twitch, um, let's get my Twitch banner. Where'd it go? Right here. Boom. So if you're curious, the Twitch banner is 1200 by 480. 1200 by 480. Um, click on that. We can label it right here. This one, I'm, I'm actually going to redesign a banner for myself. Boom. BPHS graphics. Cool. Um, keep all this the same and then just hit create. Once that dialogue window disappears, you have your, your canvas right in front of you, this white whiteboard. Um, now, things to think about. Uh, are you designing for yourself? Are you designing for your school, for a team, for someone else? Uh, in this case, since I'm designing for myself, I got to understand and know what my school colors are. Luckily, Photoshop allows me to build libraries, which I've already done, to set all this stuff up. So let's go to my... BPHS library. Let me get my Villa Park blue. Boom. And I'm going to hit option delete on the keyboard to fill my background color. And I'm also going to unlock it because eventually I'll do stuff to this background. Um, quick thing to, to know and understand is that Twitch now has this weird, um, and I'm just going to create this rectangle right here. Um, now there's like rectangle in the middle. And I'm going to align it in the middle so you guys can see. Uh, boom, boom. And for the sake of it, I'm going to change the layer guide over here. And they have this rectangle in the middle that hosts your offline information and offline video so that people know what your channel is about. So then that lets us know that anything in this area that I'm hovering the mouse over is kind of kind of dead space, but like not dead space. Like we can still do stuff, but it, we got to make sure it's non-important stuff that we put on there. And this information flexes as your page changes in size, your window and your browser changes in size. So um, in this case, kind of understanding that this is what I'm gonna do, right? And we're gonna keep it simple, nothing too complex, a, a basic crash course on this basic header for Twitch or banner, however you wanna call it, whatever the phrase you wanna use. So I'm gonna get my rectangle tool again, which on the keyboard, the shortcuts you. Um, if you're a photo P user, it's very similar. You just go get a shape. Um, that one's already there. So I'm going to kind of create this one over here on this side. Like so. And then my school colors are Columbia blue, gray, silver, white, and black, right? So I'm going to use a little gray here. I'll probably drop a logo on the left-hand side. And then we'll go from there. So... Cool, boom, there's that. Uh, this this rectangle might house the name of the page. And I'm gonna align it as I talk about this. It's gonna host uh, my social media information. You know, these are things, you know, you can think about if you have all these. And I just did a command T to adjust the size. So, you know, no biggie, no harm, no foul. So I'm gonna move this on top just to keep it there. And move it on top. Oh no, I did it right. <laughs> I'm going to lock it so I don't mess with this. So this is like my, my negative zone, right? So information, other texts, artwork, blah, 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 and all that fun stuff. So now that we know this, now that we kind of have this idea that we do have this block that will block out stuff, let's make sure that we don't put our actual name in this area because it's not going to show. Um, 
Could we put stuff underneath? You know, like I said, the page flexes, so it could get covered. So let's let's not. Uh, so like I said, I'm gonna keep this side, this thing on the side. I'm gonna press the letter T on the keyboard, so I can type right. Right now, my font is blue because that's the last color I use. I'm gonna change it to white. I just click this little square up here, right? Um, and this is actually it's gonna be graphic design. So I'm gonna type that out. Get my move tool, hold Option or Control on the keyboard, and I'm gonna clone it down. Double click, and then I'm gonna type out the word design. Um, and then I still gotta figure out placement, right? Do I want it this way? Do I want it this way? Um, we will figure that out as we go. But this information, I'm gonna shift click so they're both selected. You guys notice they're both kind of a brighter gray now. Pull these to the side over here because I want them over here. And if you guys notice, it's a little too big, so Command T. Option or control on the keyboard so it shrinks it down equally. And trust me, a graphic designer can tell if you just kind of freehanded it. Because in some cases, it's, it doesn't work. Luckily, Photoshop's new updates <laughs> kind of don't let you do that. You actually have to hold other keys to do that. Uh, but you have that, that going, you have that going for you. So boom, graphic design. Uh, I'm gonna type out another word uh, with. Mr. Larios, because that is me, Mr. L, and the place to be. Uh, obviously, this is too big, right? So Command-T, shrink it down, get it in place. So I could do it this way, right, where it all kinds of lines up. So I'm going to hold Shift-click, so it activates, it highlights all three layers. I'm going to line them all to the left. Now, it did this because these three little dots right here are set to Canvas. Let's change that to Selection, and now align them and then bring them back over here. So I can do it in the center. Actually, that might work out Boom, with Mr. Larios. Um, I can center these this way and give it that look, you know, so we have options to play with. Either way, both look pretty, pretty well right now, pretty good. Um, I can change the font, so like if I want Mr. Larios to be something different, um, I could double click on it, or not double click on it, it should work. <laughs> there we go, boom. <clears throat> and then go in here and be like, well, which font do I want to use? Gotham's a cool font. Some of our computers have those by default. Um, a lot of these fonts I found on dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. Um, and then I go from there. Extra bold, boom. But I kind of wanted to like play in levels of, of font, right? So I'm just going to go with this medium right here. So the, the main focus is this word graphic design. That's what we're focusing on, right? So, so far so good, right? Pretty, pretty simple, pretty good. Now I'm gonna go into my thing. <clears throat> Being that I do teach a CT class, I'm gonna drop my CT logo onto the document, kind of place it over here, and I'm gonna shrink it down. Smidge. Remember, it's gonna get cut off, so maybe I wanna shrink it down more. So like it fits, and it's not fully cut off, the, the, the text and everything's still visible, so that's cool. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is go back into my uh, shapes right here, get an ellipse because I kind of want to make this stand out. So I clicked, started my circle, then I held Option Shift on the keyboard. So boom. Obviously that's blue, don't want that, I'm going to make it white. And I'm going to drop it underneath the layer. I'm going to rearrange my layers so that it has a white backdrop. So it stands out more so it has a little pop to it. Now. You know, so far so good, right? I can have words repeat along the background if I wanted to, just to be like, oh, dude, this is graphic design, um, which would also work. See, there's all these ideas, there's all these possibilities when we're designing our, our, our headers, banners. So that works out, so far so good. Also, one more thing in my libraries, I'm gonna go get my, into my eSports tab, and I'm gonna get my social media logos. Boom. I'm not gonna grab the Twitch one because, um, hello, we're already designing for Twitch, so I don't need that one. Boom, okay, there's Twitter. Hit return on the keyboard, and there's that. Cool, hit return again on the keyboard, let's hide that. I'm gonna hold shift and click, so that they're both highlighted. You see, guys see the difference color and gray. Command T, boom, shrink it down. Then we'll separate them a little bit. I think the Instagram logo is a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna click on that layer, Command T it, 
I'm going to zoom in, Command or Control Plus on the keyboard, depending on your, your platform. Boom, I'm going to make the Twitter logo black as well. I'm going to double click on it. And this is where the layer styles kick in. You're like, oh, this is cool. So you double click on a layer, you get this layer style option. You have all these other options of things you can do. I'm going to click on color overlay. And it's using my default, whatever I used last time. So this is why I turned it already black for me. So that, I'm cool with that. And then shift click, move these over just a tad. Maybe full selection. I was going to say properly distribute them, but I that option is not an option for me. So I just kind of got to wing it. Center, cool. Get the letter T. Um, just go here and I'm going to type out VPHS graphics. Because that is my my handle on both platforms. Man T, shrink it down, bring it over. So get my move tool from the toolbar or the letter V on the keyboard. Uh, let's bring the Twitter logo closer to the Instagram logo just a smidge and then move these over just a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is to make this pop, um, basing the, taking the idea that I'm designing this for, <clears throat> with my school colors in mind, I'm gonna drop a, a white rectangle behind there, right? So let's go to my shapes again. Click and hold, white rectangle, click and drag from here over to the right. Boom, cool. Actually, blue works too, but I don't know if I want to use blue. I'm going to rearrange my layers so that we can see those icons. Get my move tool, cool. So that's not too shabby, you know, possibilities. But for the sake of it, I'm going to go to the Word VPHS graphics. Go up to my swatches right here and change it to black. And the cool thing is the recent updates to Photoshop show us all our recent uses of colors, the recent colors we use. If not, it's just, you know, just hitting a drop down and picking a color. In this case, boom, there's that option. Um, I could have gone into the text tool right here, chosen the color. If any of these things on the right on the right hand side ever disappear, they're all found under window. So you lose it, misplace it, boom, you can find it again. So not too shabby. This is very, very, very basic, right? Now, since I've done this in the past, I have pre-installed patterns on my Photoshop. So I'm gonna double click on my layer zero. I'm gonna Open up my layer style again, you know, that utility belt of awesomeness. I'm going to go pattern overlay. And since I've recently used this pattern, it shows up by default. I can change the scale. I can change the blend mode, just like if I were doing the blend mode for everything. Um, the opacity, I don't want it that bright. So I just keep it subtle, like it's there. So it adds a little something to the page, right? Um, the scale, link it with the layer, and all that fun stuff, and then hit OK. <clears throat> so for the time being, that's that's pretty basic, right? That's That kind of works. And again, this blue block reminds us that this is kind of like a negative zone, so we don't really want to put a lot of valid information there, or important information, right? Because it'll cut us off. So, you know, for a start, that works. Would I probably take it up another notch because I'm the teacher? Probably are you the beginner and you want to learn how to do this then this is the the starting process So hopefully this helped you guys all out and got you started But for now, I'm gonna leave it at that if you guys have any questions you know, Feel free to shoot me an email. You guys now know my social media handle Shoot me a tweet send me a message. Hey, hey, what if I want to level up? Um, or just stay tuned because there will be more of this coming your way soon. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed all that Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys all have a fabulous day. Until the next one, hasta luego. So I took it up another level. Here's my final design. Enjoy.